Let's continue solving and answering some section rule questions. The first question is uh, this one, the uh, question number one. At which of the seven positions indicated in the figure should the supporting pivot be located to produce the following? So there are uh, there is a beam and the two masses, one of them is 150 newton, the other one is 50 newton, are uh, suspended from uh, different uh, portions of this um, beam and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven positions. So from which position if we support or suspend this um, system, the system will stay in equilibrium, which means no rotation, completely in equilibrium, we will first understand this. Okay, um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, points, but eight divisions. First division, second division, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, and eight. There are eight divisions. So I'm going to um, indicate the length of, from uh, this way to that way, eight divisions, eight divisions. And uh, we are going to su suspend or support this uh, system from one of the points and we are going to keep uh, this system in rotational equilibrium, so complete in equilibrium. Okay, we don't know, but we know that it must be closer to the heavier uh, object. It must be closer to 150 newton. but what, what is the exact location? So now, uh, we, because we don't know it, we are going to just locate this um, pivot to somewhere, uh, uh, imaginary pivot I am going to locate somewhere here. I don't know exactly where it is, but we will find at the end of this calculation. And uh, I am going to say uh, this pivot, this support is uh, at a distance of x from one of the uh, weight. So you can choose this one or that one. So I will choose that this uh, pivot is at the distance of x from uh, 150 newton. In this case, other side will be 8 divisions minus x, because total is 8 divisions. If I say this side is x, other side must be 8 minus x. And, of course, 50 newton downward, 150 newton is downward again, some of them is 200, so then this pivot must apply an upward force, which is equal to 50 plus 150, which is 200 newton upward. So, um, to apply rotational equilibrium, first uh, we have to locate the uh, 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 axis of rotation to the location of the uh, pivot, so I say that this is O. This is the axis of, and uh, I am going to now define the direction of uh, rotations for each forces, 150 and 50. So fix it from the axis of rotation and push in the direction of the uh, force. It is clockwise for that, as in this force produces a clockwise rotation, which is negative. But 50 Newton force push in the direction of the force, a counterclockwise rotation. So it is positive. So one force produces a negative torque, other one produces a positive torque. Okay, let's write them. How much is them? So this is negative 150 multiplied by distance from force to the axis of rotation x. This is the torque of first force. Let's calculate the torque of the second force. It is positive, yes. 50 is the force multiplied by distance, perpendicular distance, 8 minus X. Okay, so then let's rewrite this uh, 50 times 80, which is equal to 400 minus 50. X is the torque of the second force. Torque of the third force is zero because it's acting on the axis of rotation. So torque is zero for this one. Then for no rotation, net torque must be equal to zero. And yeah, sum of all these three torques will be equal to zero, which is one of them is 400 minus 50x, other one is negative 150x, other one is zero because it's acting on axis of rotation, so sum of them is equal to zero. And continue, 400, negative 500x minus negative 150, so which is negative 200x is equal to zero, then 200x is equal to 
400. So x is equal to 400 divided by 200, which is equal to two divisions. So I got it. So if this pivot is located two divisions away from 150y, because I said x is the distance from 150. So count two divisions, one and two. So it is f. So if you support from f, so then this um, beam will stay in equilibrium, so there will be no rotation. F is the correct answer for this. So then if you support this system from F, so then there will be no rotation because this force and that force both produces equal magnitude of torque, but in opposite directions. So the net torque is going to be zero. And uh, other part of these questions is uh, part A. Part A, uh, before starting uh, for, for the net positive torque is asked. Now we are not going to uh, 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 provide rotational equilibrium. There will be a net positive torque. But to get this first, we should calculate the first part. If we know uh, at what point is there is no rotation, we can calculate, we can get uh, the point which positive torque and negative torque. We know that if we support this uh, system from F, this is the no rotation point. No rotation point. And I know that this 150 produces a negative torque and 50 produces a positive torque. Now, according to this no rotation point, both forces produce equal magnitude of torque. Count them, one division, two division. So 150 produces 150 times two, which is a negative 300 Newton meter torque. 50 Newton produces one, two, three, four, five, six divisions. 50 times a six, which is equal to positive 300 Newton meter torque. One of them is positive, the other one is negative. When you add them, zero. So no rotation point is this. But this time we are going to find a point which provides a net positive torque. So then you should, I should ask you, which force produces net pos uh, positive torque? Of course, 50 Newton produces positive torque. So then 150 Newton produces negative torque. So if I increase torque of 50 Newton, so then torque of neg uh, 150 decreases, which is negative. So then I can get a negative, po a net po negative, uh, sorry, a net, net negative positive torque. So I am going to increase torque of 50 Newton. How can I increase it? Because I cannot change the force. So I can increase this distance. So it was six, one, two, three, four, five, six, no rotation. But if I do it seven, if I do it seven, yani G. In this case, this positive torque becomes 50 times seven, which is 350 positive. But this time negative torque decreases because that distance is to the G is one. Negative 150 times one, which is negative 150 Newton meter. So one of them is positive 350. The other one is negative 350. When you add these two torques, you are going to get a positive torque, which is equal to positive 200 Newton meter. So you are going to get a positive net torque if you put the pivot to point G. But uh, part B is asking you for a negative torque. This time, again, no rotation point is F. This is no rotation point. And we know that uh, here, in this case, positive torque, negative torque pro is produced by a uh, 150, which is 150 times 2, which is equal to negative 300. And this uh, produces a positive torque no rotation, which is po positive 50 times 6, which is again 300, but positive, some of them zero, so no rotation. But this time we are going to make this torque greater. How? Distance for this force must be increased. So which means 1, 2, so if you can make it 3, you can make it 4, 5, 6, 7. Any point on the left of point F, A, e, D, C, B, A, all these points provides provides a net negative torque because distance as distance increases more than two 
so then negative torque increases but positive torque decreases when you add them so then you are going to get a net negative torque this is the solution of this section review question question number one and let's continue with the second section review question describe the approximate location of the center of mass for the following objects one of them is 50 uh, a meter stick, you know, a meter stick is one meter long, which is 50, 100 centimeter. So midpoint is the center of mass, which is 50 centimeter. If you support this uh, one meter stick from 50 centimeter, so you can uh, keep it in balance. That's why this point is the center of mass. For bowling ball, because it's a sphere, many of you think that center of mass is geometric center. However, there are two finger holes finger holes are which means some masses are remote masses are remote when you remove some mass from finger holes which means and then central must shift to the heavier side this side becomes heavier than that side that's why central mass will be away from the finger hole but closer to heavier side closer to geometric center of the sphere but away from the finger holes is the answer for an ice cube, again, geometric center because it's a regular shaped object. For donut, again, geometric center because it is a, a regular shaped object. For banana, uh, close to the middle along the line. So if you draw a line through the middle, it's going to be closer, but in the middle, somewhere here. So, of course, its shape of the banana is also important. Some bananas are curved, some are straight. So that, but we can say that there's a middle... Uh, line and then uh, just uh, draw a line through the banana and it's going to be very close to the middle of this banana and uh, question number four because uh, three is skipped because three is about section three question number four identify which if any conditions of equilibrium hold for the following situations this example is very important many mr exam uh, these questions are asked about this a bicycle will rolling rolling Along a level highway at constant speed. Level highway means straight. I mean, the uh, it doesn't turn right, left, uh, and constant speed. If there is no change in the direction, so which means there is no angular acceleration, zero angular acceleration, because if object is not moving on a circular path, so then you can understand that that there is no angular. But and also constant speed, uh, which means uh, there is also no linear acceleration. So zero linear acceleration, zero angular acceleration. If acceleration is zero, so then you can say that this object is in equilibrium. So zero angular acceleration provides rotational equilibrium. Zero linear acceleration provides translational equilibrium, which means bicycle will rolling along a level highways at constant speed has both translational and rotational equilibrium. A bicycle park again is a curve. Of course, it's very simple. I mean, the, there is no, it's not moving. It's just a stressed. So both translational and rotational equilibrium because both accelerations are zero here and uh, a tires the tires of a braking automobile that is still moving braking is keyword here if automobile is braking which means tires are also braking okay tires are slowing down if it is slowing down so tangential speed is decreasing so there must be some uh, it, if tangential speed is decreasing, there must be angle tangential acceleration. Yeah, this must be tangential acceleration. Tangential acceleration. If tangential acceleration is uh, decreasing, which means some of the force acting object cannot be equal to zero, so no translational equilibrium. Translational equilibrium does not exist because there is some tangential acceleration. If the angular speed is decreasing, according to the equation, this is, if the uh, tangential speed decreasing, this is tangential speed, this is angular speed, these two are related. If one of them is decreasing, that one is also decreasing, decreasing angular speed. If angular speed is decreasing, there must be an angular acceleration. So if there is a change in uh, angular speed, so there must be an angular acceleration. If there's an angular acceleration, in this case, if there's acceleration, no equilibrium if there is no acceleration yes equilibrium so there is an angular acceleration so that's why there is no rotational rotational equilibrium and d a football traveling through the air if you throw a football in air only one force acts on the uh, 
um, do well, which is the gravitational force, and free, gravitational force uh, causes free relaxation. Remember G. If there is a free relaxation, and free relaxation is known as linear acceleration, so linear acceleration exists. If linear acceleration exists, of course, translational equilibrium does not exist. No translational equilibrium. But Gravitational force only causes object to, I mean, to move up and down. It doesn't cause rotation of the ball. So then that's why uh, zero acceleration, no angular acceleration. So in this case, zero angular acceleration. If angular acceleration is zero, of course, there must be rotational equilibrium. So here is the rotational equilibrium exists, but translational equilibrium does not exist for this question. And uh, another question is, there's one more, but it's very similar to the previous question we solved. I will skip question number five. It is very similar to practice problem. And uh, this question is many times asked to me uh, frequently. Uh, why would it be beneficial for a bicycle to have low center of mass when rider rounds a turn? Okay. Uh, first, what does low center of mass mean? We should get this. Low center of mass, for example, when you... Hold this uh, pen, central mass is here. This point is central mass. Uh, pardon, this, yeah, if I take this, central mass gets closer to the uh, ground. So high central mass, low central mass. So which means it's possible to make a bicycle low central mass by taking, for example, by making the seat closer to the ground or farther from the ground. So then this point can be a high central mass if you take the seat up. This point is a low central mass if you take the seat down. So if uh, centr low central mass happens, uh, normally bicycle, if, when you are turning uh, uh, at round, uh, bicycle is not perpendicular to the ground. We are a little inclined the bicycle like this. So the bicycle makes some angle with the ground. That's why this gravitational force of the acting on the bicycle can cause you tip over when you are turning. However, high central mass, if the central mass is high, this is the axis of rotation. Distance from the force to the axis of rotation is, becomes greater. If distance is great, Torque becomes greater. So then for high central mass, torque is equal to FGD sine theta because D is greater, torque is greater. But if you take it to uh, you make bicycle to low central mass, this time, because distance gets shorter for this one, FGD2 sine theta, because D2 is smaller, because it's closer to the ground, low central mass, torque becomes smaller. So if torque is smaller, this bicycle cannot tip over very quickly or very easily. But if it is high central mass, distance from the ground increases, so then torque produced by the gravitational force is big, so it can tip over very quickly.